Speaking of naps, I'm not that awesome. I need you to wake up. What is up, my Squirtleites? It is I, your king. Welcoming you back to more Let's Play Okami. In the last episode, we were given the story intro and we met three characters Amaterasu herself, Isun, and Sakuya. Now, we are in Kimiki Village, however, the village is obviously in total crisis and peril. As you can see, the sky up above is just. Not a not a cool thing at all right now. Like there there are literally tidal waves of purple in the background. That is just not okay. But to fix this problem, we need to go under this tree into the light. And this will take us to a very special area with pretty pretty music. Where are we? I got awfully quiet all of a sudden. I don't remember any place like this in the village. Well, we better keep our eyes peeled. You can use the right stick to look around. Allow one button changes your point of view. Boy, you really look so helpless. You sure you're going to be okay? Of course I'm going to be okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get talking to this about this game. Okay, so as he said, right stick changes your view. Pretty simple. Inverted vertical controls. You know, actually, it's inverted all the way around. Um, holding L1 puts you in a first-person view. However, you cannot move while you're in this first-person view, so don't think you can play the game like that. It just doesn't work that way. Um, other buttons. Uh, L2 brings up your map of this area. As you can see, this this is actually a, de a decent sized area. There's a lot more to this. Um, R2 does nothing at the moment. Uh, circle causes you to bark, but also doubles as bringing up your menu. Up there in the top left, we have our health. Bottom right, we have our money. Uh, square is to dash and also puts you in a sprint. And then triangle is to, as any dog should do, dig, 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 dig and pressing it repeatedly causes you to dig faster. Now, he is going to explain all these things that I just explained to you in the coming areas, but I'm going to be able to just skip over those and kind of show you how they work when we get to them. Hold on, that's an origin mirror. They say once your reflection appears on its surface, your memories will be stored in the mirror for all eternity. Well, to put it shortly, you can save your progress here, and that's why I like Isun. He just cuts to the chase. And let me give you a little advice. You should save a number of game files. That way you can always go back. If you get stuck or something, gotta be prepared, especially when you're still learning the ropes. You gotta point Isun. We will not be saving right now, however. I'll be doing that at a later time. But now this. Look at all those pots just waiting to be broken. That is just sad. Why does everybody in Japan think, oh look, pot, must break it. If you bust them, there might be something good inside. Press the square button to bust them with your head. Well, I, I suppose I can do that. So by tackling it, we get little goodies every time we break one of these things, such as money and other things that we will be seeing later. So yes, you actually get some yen out of this stuff. Which is pretty cool, I mean, you know, it's just like Legend of Zelda break pots for money, you know? I mean, we're, we, we're used to that at this point, though, so it's not like it's that obscure. But anyways, let's keep going over this way. And, right here... Whoa, 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 hold on there, Purple, I'll get a load of that. That chest looks mighty tempting. Isun, you have said that many times, I just know it, considering you were taking a nap in one in the last episode. Let's go check it out. Getting up that high ought to be a piece of cake. Press the X button to jump, then press uh, the X button again to do a wall jump. Make sure you press it firmly so you jump really high. What he means by that, and yes, you do have to press it firmly, if you just tap it when you press X, you're not going to go that high off the wall. That's why you need to hold it firmly, such as that, basically. I knew you could do it. They say good luck is found in high places, so keep your eyes peeled. We, might, we don't want to miss any treasure. Now, speaking of treasure, this isn't really a treasure, this is more of a healing item. Uh, restores three units of solar energy, that's always nice. I can definitely appreciate that. However, I'm not really worried about that right now. It's not like we're taking damage here, this place is peaceful. It's pretty. Looks like the bridge is out. Oh, just another day, right? This shouldn't be so hard. Um, Amaterasu, was it? That's kind of long. Mind if I call you Ami? Not at all. Listen, Ami, ever heard of the spirits of the brush? Good brushwork has its own soul. At least, that's what they say. Just watch. It'd take all day to explain. A picture's worth a thousand words, right? And so Isun is going to demonstrate what makes this game so unique. Nice, huh? Just a little technique I've mastered called rejuvenation. It's one of many brush techniques that use divine power. It's a brush god power that, uh, that can restore broken or missing things. I've practiced really hard just to master this one technique. But there are 13. Each one is a power of one of the 13 brush gods. Originally, all 13 were a single powerful deity. When the deity died, its, po its power excuse me, was split into 13 separate gods. The gods now dwell within objects all around us, but god or no god, how could anyone have the power to master all 13? Well, Isun, thank you for hinting at our objective. Hint, hints, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, nod, nod. Okami is... In short, and let me just summarize this, is a game about Shirinui Reborn into a Matarasu, who 
has lost all of her powers, and yes, strangely enough, before anyone points it out, Shiranu is a boy, Amaterasu is a girl. Yes, I don't know why it was reincarnated as a different gender, but it, it, it makes sense in Japanese mythology. I'll get into that later. Anyway, and we are out to basically restore ourselves to the way we were back when we were Shiranui, and also bring peace to the world. Now, heading up this way, River of the Heavens. The River of the Heavens, they mean the fabled Stardust River? But I sure don't see anything like that around here. It couldn't be that little puddle over there, could it? What puddle? I don't see no puddle. I don't know that looks like water. Well, when he means puddle, he means this thing right here. Yes, this is actually something you can swim in. Yay! However, we can't swim very far. As you can see, denied. And we want to get way over there to that glowy. The glowy is usually the most important place to go. And unfortunately, we cannot reach it at the moment. But if we head up to the top of this hill... Wow, look at the stars twinkle. I haven't seen such a beautiful nighttime sky in ages. Hey, look. Are those stars forming a pattern, or, or is it just me? No, soon it's just you. You really need to lay off the booze. Hmm, there's one missing. Guess I'll have to draw on the missing star. Now, Isun can build bridges, but unfortunately, he cannot draw dots. Ah, <sighs> looks like I'm not just not ready to draw missing stars. Press the R1 button to hold the brush, then the square button to draw. I sure spent a heck of a lot of time practicing that, mumple. Now, Easton's incompetence was really just to give us a tutorial. What we need to do is open up the brush screen with R1. As you can see, our brush looks a little different. That is because this is a Matarasu's tail. Yeah, fun fact. Anyway, just press square, and there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Yomi Gami. He is the god of restoration and or rejuvenation. Yomi meaning to restore or rejuvenate in Japanese mythology. Gami, which uh, can mean many, many things. Um, the one in this context is godly or, um, you know, divinely. Or divinely is not a word. Divine, godly, something along those lines. It can also mean gracefully too. So that... I guess can pertain to the type of the power using to gracefully restore, to gracefully, gracefully rejuvenate, because pretty much anything and everything about Amaterasu is graceful, godly, etc. But yes, Yomigami, literally the god of rejuvenation. And I'm not reading his text because, well, it's already over. I didn't really feel the need to suddenly jump in at the last second, but yes, we are about to be given this lovely dragon's power. Goodness! Wow, that was Yomigami, the god of rejuvenation. Wait, so you have the power of rejuvenation now? Can you really use it to restore the river of the heavens? That would mean you were as good with a brush as yours truly. Nah, it couldn't be true. Who else could master this incredible god technique? Well, why none other than a god, of course. And also, I'm going to jump over this shrine just because I can. River of the heavens. I wonder if drawing some stardust would get the river flowing again. Nah, it's one thing to fix a bridge, but fixing a starry river, there's no way you could pull off a stunt like that. You wanna bet, Isun? I totally could. Watch me. Just watch me. So get right here, and just start drawing. Now you can see the little smokes coming out. It's kind of these black smokes. That means rejuvenation is working perfectly. And my ink's about to run out, and there it goes. Bam! Also, the slowdown was immaculate. River of Stardust, so this really must be the River of Heavens. What I really wanna know is who the heck drew that darn thing? Isun is still not convinced that we can actually use a brush, but that is okay. He will learn in time. Now, just swim across this. Now, you can, you can see right here. Look at the way Amaterasu swims. It's a little bit silly. Um, in the original and actually the alpha build of this game, Amaterasu actually had the ability when she was swimming to transform into a dolphin. And uh, when she would jump, she had, the transform, uh, she had the ability to transform into an eagle. Those will both be expanded upon even more later um, but for now that's just a little fun fact for you let's open this thing up and this is kind of important you obtained the astral pouch look what you found for well this astral pouch here is amazing it could swallow up lots of food then when it's full it can revive the owner if he or she dies let's start feeding it with whatever we, food we can find out here so basically this is a uh, second stomach yep and we can fill it with food and happiness and it basically once it is full acts as an automatic one-up which isn't really that needed because it's, it's it's not really hard to die i mean it's kind of like a fairy in a bottle i guess except for you fill the bottle with food anyway 
and also it completely, I think it completely brings you back. But anyway, let's go through the light and see what is on the other side. Now, something I, you, you know, you're probably expecting, why haven't I mentioned this? Yes, it, or, <laughs> yes, this yet is the art style of this game. Now, this that is one of the things that has made this game so unique in other people's eyes before they've even played it, is the art style. Everyone notices, oh, the Sumie, the watercolor style to it, and they're, you know, and it, it really is revolutionary and amazing, and especially in this version, which is the HD version that I am playing it on, on the PS3. I don't really have a lot to say about it. I mean, yeah, it looks really pretty, you know, very defined black lines. It, it takes after a traditional Japanese Sumie art, and that's really all there is to be said about it. Um, in the PS2 version, they uh, tried to kind of give, and it's kind of prevalent in the PS3 version, but not as much. In fact, it can be more prevalent if I'm going to go in the options and change the filter to heavy. And so if I exit the, uh, exit the options, you, it can actually look even more so. Um, but I'm actually going to go back and fix it the way it was. Um, excuse me. Anyway, um, basically the illusion is that this entire game is played on a parch on parchment paper. Now, in the Wii version, this is not prevalent at all. They completely took out the grainy filter to it on purpose, um, and it just looks very normal. However, sadly, because that is a port, and because they decided to do that, and, why I'll, and I'll never understand why they decided to do that, uh, the game suffers from a couple texture glitches um, in actually many areas of the game, so that is one downside to the Wii version. But anyways, let's open this chest up, and you have obtained a stray bead. Great, we got a bead. What does that even mean? Find all the scattered beads and get a special reward. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this Okami Let's Play is, well, a, not only just a 100% Let's Play, this is a Platinum Run. Yup. Um, I'm going to be going for every single trophy in the Okami HD trophy list, which is a lot more than just 100% by the original game standards. Um, those three beads that you saw right there, that one of those, that is the first of 100 that we will be obtaining throughout this game. Uh, upon obtaining 100, you get a really cool reward at the end that I will be sure to show. On top of that, there are a lot of trophies, such, um, and I'll be getting into those later, including some really obscure ones that we're going to be getting as well. I'm going to basically show you guys how to platinum this game. It's going to be fun. This is not the easiest game to platinum either. So, anyways, let's head up this stairs, staircase and through the door and oh look at the statue oh come on man trapped oh I guess Eastern doesn't care is this is this the legendary shrine we must be in the cave of Nagi the legendary hero Nagi is enshrined here he vanquished evil 100 years ago with the help of the white wolf Shiranui first the river of the heavens and now this place where the heck are we furball boy this place is a wreck see that sword's in really bad shape the god sure didn't do much to protect this place now, unfortunately, the sword is broken, but, uh, beginning of the episode, or near the beginning of the episode, we kind of earned this power that allows us to fix broken things. whoop de doo I really was your brushwork all this time. How'd you get so good? Exactly who are you, anyway? Hey, there's another constellation. This one looks like a... Question mark! No, it is not a question mark. It is indeed a rat. Okay, mouse. And we have potentially the most useful power in the entire game. Also, a sword way longer than the sheath it came out of, but whatever, it's a cartoon. I can forgive it. This is Tachigami, the god of rending and cutting. Our goddess, I suppose. It's been a long time, but with all these monsters around, the only place I could hide was in this shrine dedicated to ancient heroes. If there is anything I can do to assist you in your endeavors, I'm at your service. Make good use of this sword, as it was designed to conquer evil. And, as I said, this power is potentially one of the most useful powers in the game. In fact, in battle, it probably is the most useful, and the one you'll end up, you'll find yourself using the most. And yes, I said in battle. We'll be getting into that in... The next episode, actually. Hey, that was the god, Tachigami. Master of the power slash technique. Wait a minute. If you're getting all these powers, then you're just like that Shooter Nui. You know, the wolf who died... The, who, uh, sorry, the wolf who fought and died alongside the great Nagi. When Shooter Nui died, the wolf's power was split into the 13 brush gods. This is crazy. Shooter Nui and Nagi, it's just like the legend. 
Well, anyway, I've never seen this power slash technique myself. How about showing your stuff off over on that boulder? Let me see you slice it in half by drawing a single line. I won't believe it till I see it. And that's basically what he said. Just draw a line across it. There you go. Wow, I didn't think you had an in, you furball. I'm not even in the same league as you. Guess I really overestimated myself. Hey, furball. Or, I mean, Amaterasu. I've made up my mind. If you're Shiranui Reborn, then that means you can master all 13 techniques, right? In that case, I think I'll tag along until I'm as good as you. Lucky you. <laughs> Lucky us. <laughs> Still use trying to change my mind. There's no stopping me once I made a decision. But enough about me, now that you've mastered the Power Slash, you can cut down that thing Sakuya was talking about. Let's go back and give it a shot. Yeah, sure, with freaking tutorial arrow guiding our way. Now, Power Slash is awesome. As you can see, I slashed through three pots at once. That just makes, that's just oh so useful. And we're going to be using that actually to get out of this cave in the next episode. But right now, I'm trapped. It's scary. It's terrifying. I'm going to be stuck here for a whole 20... Three and a half hours. I don't want to do this. Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Squirtle King. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Let's Play Okami very much, and I will see you all in the next one.